The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. They continue to drag their feet, Mr. Speaker. But there's been another blow to the Prime Minister's carbon tax scheme. A new report from the Parliamentary Budget Officer shows yet again that Canadians are worse off under this tax. Here's what the total bill will be when the NDP Liberals finish quadrupling this tax. It'll cost people in Ontario $1,400, $1,500 in Newfoundland, and a whopping $2,000 in Saskatchewan. Canadians are already struggling with higher costs, higher groceries, and higher mortgage rates. The last thing they need is another bill from a useless carbon tax. If the government's so sure that Canadians support the tax, why not let the people decide in a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, let me read you the first paragraph of the PBO's report. And I quote, Considering only the fiscal impact of federal fuel charge, PBO estimates that average household in each of the backstop provinces in 2030-31 will see a net gain, receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in federal fuel charge and related GST, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition should apologize to Canadians for misleading them all these months. Colleagues on all sides, please, I'm going to ask you to not take the floor unless the Speaker recognizes you. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. The minister might want to read the rest of the report because exactly. in the quote he cited, he focused on a very key word, only mm -hmm. the direct costs. When you factor in all the economic costs, it costs the Canadian household $1,400. Exactly. Canadians are net losers under this carbon tax scheme and this minister knows it. Right. So if he's so sure that Canadians want this government to keep quadrupling the tax, why not let the people decide in a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Let me read you another paragraph from the report, Mr. Speaker. Moreover, in 2030-31, for all backstop provinces, we estimate that the average household in each income quintile will see a net gain, except for average household in the highest income Quintile, Mr. Speaker. You know what the Leader of the Opposition is doing? He wants to take money away from the middle class and poor Canadians to protect his rich CEO friends. That's what he's doing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Foothills. The Minister is trying very hard to get Canadians not to understand the details. But the details are, and the facts are, that the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirmed what Canadians already know. Exactly. They're being robbed by a carbon tax, which is driving up the cost of groceries, of gas, and everyday essentials. In fact, a family in Prince Edward Island will pay almost $1,200 a year when the NDP Liberals quadruple the carbon tax. Canadians don't support the carbon tax. We know 10 provinces don't support the carbon tax. Will the Prime Minister listen to Canadians and call a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. The member talks about the agricultural sector. Well, let's talk about the climate impacts on the agricultural sector, Mr. Speaker. Droughts in 2021 resulted in 27% decline in Canada's grain production. Over the last decade, over 200 Canadian farmers have experienced cost increases and revenue loss from climate impacts, Mr. Speaker. This member and this party never talks about the impacts of climate change on farmers, on the price of food in Canada. They want to try and make us believe that climate change isn't happening. It is happening. And on this side of the House, we're here for Canadians, Mr. Bravo, Speaker. Bravo, bravo. The Honourable Member from Foothills. The minister is either living in denial or purposely misleading yes. Canadians because the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report is clear. Yes. It costs Canadians more to pay the carbon tax than what they get back in rebates. But if the minister doesn't believe me, I would encourage him to read the Parliamentary Budget Report. But in the essence of time, let me help out. Page 19 states Canadians are worse off paying the carbon tax, right. period. That is the fact. That's the fact. But again, if the minister is so confident that Canadians support this carbon tax, why are they so afraid to call a carbon exactly. tax election? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for the Environment
environment and climate change. The member points to indirect costs. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about indirect costs. Loss of revenue of $150 million in 2023 due to flooded in farmlands across this country, Mr. Speaker. The dairy farmers, egg farmers of Canada, grain growers, Canal Council all support our plan to fight climate change. It's time for the Conservative Party of Canada to come on board, Mr. Speaker. Hello. Order. The, the honourable member from Calgary Forest Lawn. After nine years, taxes up, costs up, crimes up, times up. Canadians are fed up. Right. New PBO reports, same results. Canadians pay more into the carbon tax scam than what they get back in phony rebates. An average Albertan family will pay nearly two thousand dollars in carbon taxes after this radical Liberal NDP government quadruples the carbon tax. That's why ten provinces oppose the carbon tax scam. They know it's like the prime minister and not worth the cost. If they're so sure about this carbon tax scam, why not call a car carbon tax election now so Canadians can decide to axe the tax for good? That's right. Call it now. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think everyone in this House and Canadians watching should take everything this finance critic oh. says about the economy with a big grain of salt, Mr. Speaker. It is this finance critics that told us that if we paused our federal taxes, people in this province could save $1,000 without telling them that they'd have to drive from the North Pole to the South Pole, Mr. Speaker, to benefit from those wonderful savings. So I think we should all be very, very careful with what he says about the economy in this House, Mr. Absolutely. Speaker. Yes. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Forest Lawn. We won't take any lessons from that minister who let Jasper burn because of his incompetence. I'll send him over a copy of that PBO's report with some diagrams and some pictures so maybe he can understand and flip over to page 19, table 3, that clearly shows a majority of Canadians pay more into this scam than what they get back in these phony rebates. Right. Two million Canadians are going into a food bank in a single month. One in four Canadians are skipping meals because of their carbon tax scam. If they're so sure about this carbon tax scam, let's go to a carbon tax election now so Canadians can kick this costly carbon tax coalition to the curb for good. That's a call. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, we all suffer when we see that there are folks in our community that are struggling. And there is more work to be done, which is exactly why, on this side of the House, we continue to fight for Canadians, to fight for high-quality child care, to fight for the Canada Child Benefit, to fight for the environment and the carbon rebate, Mr. Speaker. But let's not kid ourselves. We know that these programs that Canadians rely on would be in danger if the Conservatives had their way. The Honourable Member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Today, the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirmed again that the carbon tax costs Canadians more than they get back in rebates. And when the NDP Liberals quadruple the carbon tax, families in Ontario will be paying more than $1,400 a year in carbon taxes. This makes everything more expensive. Gas, groceries, home heating. The NDP Liberal government and their carbon tax are not worth the cost. In fact, all 10 provinces are opposed to this costly coalition's carbon tax. So will the Prime Minister give Canadians what they want and call a carbon tax election? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And if you read the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report of today, you will see that he further confirmed once again that 8 out of 10 Canadian families right. get more in the carbon right. rebate Breaking than news. they pay in the price on pollution. And, Mr. Speaker, it was also clear from today's report that the economic cost of pollution is not being factored in. And that cost is $34 billion wow. per year, Mr. Wow. Speaker. Wow. And that does not include the billions of dollars that disaster mitigation costs. Every time there's a disaster in this country, it costs Canadian taxpayers. We are there in order to take climate action. Here, here. 
invite the honourable member from uh, Edmonton West, please, to uh, keep his counsel until he has the floor to speak before the House. The honourable uh, member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Well, once again, Liberal logic is on display and their math doesn't add up. It seems the Liberals have a hard time with basic concepts like, you know, reality or how money works. So let me make this really simple. Table 3 on page 19 of the PBO report shows what the cost of the carbon tax is. And I can send the minister a copy. The PBO says Canadians are paying more in carbon tax and GST on top of the carbon tax than they get back in rebates. And the reality is people have less money to pay for food, fuel and home heating. Enough is enough. Will the Prime Minister call a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister for Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Enough is enough. 300 economists have said it. The pay rich more, the, the rich pay more, middle class Canadians pay less. Everyone gets the same rebate. The rich pay more than they receive. Middle class Canadians receive more than they pay. It's that simple, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Durham. Mr. Speaker, today the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirmed once again that the carbon tax is costing Canadian families more than they're getting back in rebates. Yep. Once the NDP Liberals quadruple the carbon tax, as they intend to do, the average family in Ontario will pay an additional tax up to $1,400. Mm-hmm. Now, to Liberal elites, that might not sound like a lot of money. The Prime Minister could probably find $1,400 in between his couch cushions. But to the average Canadian family, that's quite a lot of money. So when are we going to get the carbon tax election Canadians desperately deserve? That's a good question. The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Let me read again, Mr. Speaker, from the Parliament Budget Officer's report. And I quote, The the general consensus amongst economists is that explicit carbon pricing is the most effective approach to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The Conservative Party of Canada has no plan to fight climate change. The Conservative Party of Canada has no plan to adapt to the massive impacts of climate change that are costing Canadians tens of billions of dollars, Mr. Speaker. The Conservative Party of Canada has no plan for the economy. The Conservative Party of Canada has nothing to say about this conversation, Mr. Bravo. Speaker. Bravo. The Honourable Member from Durham. Mr. Speaker, you like to talk about civility and decorum. And in the interest of civility and decorum, I'd like to invite the Minister to Table 3. Table 3 on page 19 of the PBO report, which details the overall cost of the carbon tax. Maybe when the Environmental Minister actually reviews the report and Table 3 on page 19, he might agree with me and most other Canadians that we need a carbon tax election now. So will the Minister review the table, come back to us and say, when we're going to get an election that Canadians deserve. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, in the interest of clarity, I think Canadians would like to understand what the Conservatives plan to cut. And he talks about families in Ontario. Well, they refuse to talk about the Canada Child Benefit that puts thousands of dollars in the pockets of Canadian families every single year. They refuse to talk about child care that saves Canadian families thousands of dollars every year. And when they talk about the price on pollution, Mr. Speaker, they conveniently omit the fact that Canadian families get more money back than they put in. Mr. Speaker, they want to put their hands in the pockets of Canadians and take that money away. Thank you. Good answer. The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, Statistics Canada confirmed today what millions of Canadians already know. While the rich are getting richer, the most vulnerable are falling further and further behind. Today, Stats Canada re- uh, reported that the gap between the 40% top earners and the 40% bottom earners grew by nearly 50%. They reported that the income inequity has never been higher in our country. Wow. This government has a choice. Will they continue their agenda in causing misery across our country, or will they finally call a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, I recently got to meet with a young mom named Madeline from my community who shared with me how important the Canada Child Benefit has been to her young family in these early days. 
The Conservatives have made their position very clear, Mr. Speaker. They would cut the Canada Child Benefit and leave the 4.3 million mums across this country, like Madeline, without the support that they need. That is what Conservative cuts look like, Mr. Speaker.